Hello, everyone. Uh, again, together with you, uh, our discussion club of New Geopolitical Research Network. And uh, uh, today we'll try to cover several topics which we uh, actually uh, seen in our informational space and not only in informational space, but in reality. Uh, of course, first of all, I'd like to discuss with my colleagues the current situation on the front lines and uh, maybe we'll find some uh, forecast because a lot of people asking what is going on why ukrainian armed forces uh, didn't start the uh, uh, the deoccupation of Kherson novas uh, uh, yet why uh, russian forces uh, collecting uh, forces on krivoyrikh uh, and and actually trying to stop this uh, uh, counteroffensive operation by ukrainian armed forces and i think that uh, from my opinion, I, I just start and uh, will propose to my colleagues to, to continue. From my opinion that uh, Russian armed forces now just lost strategic uh, initiative and Ukrainian forces forming the schedule of the strategic picture. Why I'm thinking like this? Because uh, when Ukrainian forces announced actually, announced by President uh, uh, the Secretary of uh, Security and Defense Council, Danilov, and another official that Ukrainian forces is going to the occupied Kherson Oblast and uh, started to use HIMARS to destroy this, all of these communication logistic lines and especially bridges. Uh, Russian forces uh, found it and, and tried to change strategic picture to move some forces to enforce the Russian troops on the uh, uh, right bank of, of the Dnipro uh, river and trying to stop Ukrainian counteroffensive operation because, to be honest, I cannot imagine uh, Putin personally explaining why it was an act of goodwill uh, and uh, losing Kherson uh, by Russian forces because they are preparing for referendum and, of course, the Kherson is only one regional big regional center uh, occupied uh, by Russian forces in 24th of February. So uh, in this situation, Russian forces trying to uh, use again, tactics of uh, these crazy mangoes uh, attacking Ukrainian forces from different, different directions. For example, if you look at the map, uh, you, uh, uh, Ukrainian forces filling attacks from uh, Russians on uh, uh, Avdiivka, of course, Bakhmut Solidar directions, uh, which is actually normally after the uh, Severodonetsk and Lysychansk and trying to occupy uh, Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. But obviously, it's not uh, as, as, as strong actions as before, one month ago. And now it's, it looks like a tactical, uh, tactical moves from Russian forces. And you, you, could see the, you could see the same. Uh, small attacks uh, sh uh, with trying to destroy uh, or break through Ukrainian defense uh, forces on uh, Izium direction. In the same time, we see information that Ukrainian forces are occupying some, some villages in Izium direction. So I think it's a pretty complicated, uh, complicated uh, uh, operational uh, picture now, but the main conclusion from my side that Ukraine now forming this, the uh, schedule of the, on the strategic level and Russian forces trying to close the holes on, on, on different uh, areas on, on the front line. And from another, uh, from another point of view, Russian forces again trying to attack from four or five directions uh, to avoid concentrated Ukrainian forces on Kherson Oblast. So, uh, so colleagues, please, uh, uh, what is your opinion on the uh, current uh, front line and actually uh, military op military operation situation? Igor, please. Uh, yeah, a couple of words. Uh, I, I, I was uh, like again to mention that the Ukrainian counteroffensive operation on the uh, south, uh, south flank in the Kherson and Mykolaiv region has already started. So there's, uh, there's a still uh, some kind of uh, misunderstanding of the uh, current warfare by different observers and uh, mostly by the population, which are expecting the, uh, some kind of offensive operations on the uh, 
like they were held during the First World War or the Second World War. But the, the, uh, the modern warfare uh, uh, doesn't uh, wage in, 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 in uh, according to, to, to such, uh, let's say, such uh, schemes, such, such plans like it uh, had been well, uh, 70 or 100 years ago. We see that, and you mentioned also that Ukraine, uh, Ukrainian forces have liberated uh, a lot of uh, Ukrainian cities and villages on the on the south, and we see that uh, Russian troops are relocating. Uh, Russians are relocating their troops to, to to the south to fill the gaps in their uh, defense defense law. So we see that this uh, counter. Uh, Counter-offensive operation of Ukrainian forces is 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 going on and cause big problems for Russians. And uh, uh, one of the proofs of that can be, and I think it's uh, worth mentioning here, is the uh, statement of the former German Chancellor uh, Schroeder, who who uh, was in, in Moscow uh, recently, and he says that uh, Putin. In, in these days, when we, we may talk about Ukrainian counteroffensive operation in the South, he is that Putin is ready for uh, negotiations. So the question is why? Why he is ready for negotiations? And I think that uh, the answer is that Putin understands the, the critical situation for, for his forces from the South, and he wants at any cost to stop the Ukrainian forces advances. So, uh, uh, and that, that's that's uh, another proof of the success uh, of uh, Ukrainian forces' actions on, on the south. So, uh, so for us, it's very important not to give the the the, uh, the, the, the Putin not to give the Russian forces this this pause, so he, he, they can to relocate more troops to fill all the gaps and. Uh, to use this post to 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 concentrate more forces, more more equipment, and uh, to uh, stop our active uh, uh, successful active actions on, on the south. Yeah, actually, absolutely. I I, I would say that uh, this strategic deadlock actually uh, appeared for Putin a long time ago. Obviously, since 24 for February when he started this operation, but they found that it's absolutely different from the imagination of, of this operation and reality was absolutely different, but they try to change it. But now it's obviously deadlock for Putin and he's trying to find a way uh, to, to exit from, from the battle. But uh, I'm sure that Ukrainian forces won't, won't uh, give him a, a chance. Uh, we should pay attention on what is going on already at the front lines, because there is a clear connection from my perspective, and uh, according to some information that was circulating in Ukrainian, Ukrainian as well as Western media about uh, Russians' attempts to concentrate more manpower and additional uh, battalion tactic groups that were deployed in uh, Kherson region. And uh, there are many rumors that Russia will attempt to uh, provide an offensive operations in attempts to at least uh, to occupy the whole territory of Kherson region. And from my perspective, the main aim is to uh, proclaim a uh, referendum in September. And in uh, such a scenario, Russia should uh, occupy the whole territory of the region. However, Ukrainian forces still con control big footholds on uh, western parts and northern parts of Kherson region and uh, are planning to provide their own offensive operations in attempts to reoccupy uh, Kherson city. So uh, I think that we will witness uh, more severe clashes during next weeks and uh, that, uh, that will define whether Russia will decide to provide uh, such a referendum. It may be provided also in online form. Uh, but uh, anyway, Russia should secure the, its uh, logistic, logistics in Kherson. The only chance to do so for them is to proclaim this territory, the, uh, I mean, Kherson region, proclaim its territory as a Russian territory and cover it with their nuclear umbrella. So to 
push uh, Europeans and uh, our Western partners to prevent them from sending us uh, additional weaponry uh, with a blackmail of using tactical nuclear weapon if Ukraine will continue targeting Kherson Oblast as a uh, originally uh, Russian territory. So I think that that, that is the one of the scenario uh, that uh, Kremlin will attempt uh, to implement in uh, such circumstances because the Russian forces do not have enough uh, manpower to push Ukrainian forces to their uh, distension uh, from which uh, MLRS systems will not be able to target uh, bridges over Dnipro River. And that is the main challenge for Ukraine as well. So we should prepare uh, to defend our no, position. Do, do, you think, do, you think that, do you think that Russian forces have enough troops to conduct offensive operation? Can you imagine uh, how risky it is for Russians? Do not have a normal logistics because of the uh, very poor uh, bridges. And uh, uh, in this situation, uh, the forces, they stay in on the right bank of the Dnipro River, they trying to, okay, they trying to attack Ukrainian forces. They, uh, during the uh, offensive operation, the consuming of resources is very high. So it's uh, the, uh, the, the fuel for armor vehicles will disappear very, very easy and very fast. So in this situation, it will be a catastrophic situation for Russian forces in, from military point of view. Of course, we can dream. I mean, the Russians can dream that they uh, will provide the online referendum globally, and they will cover for nuclear umbrella all of all of the world, uh, including including the Madagascar. But in reality, it's absolutely different situation. They cannot provide normal logistics for this group of forces. They have already there twenty eight of uh, battalion task forces and uh, consuming of resources, not only uh, ammunition that. Uh, the elementary, the basic fuel, very high, very high. It's it's a, a it's a thousand of tons, and it's impossible to to replace it uh, and and uh, give the uh, the the give new fuel uh, very fast. So I think that it's, it's uh, they could try, but I think that the main uh, main uh, intentions will be stop Ukrainian counteroffensive operation. Do not make it uh, uh, successful. Okay, you're, you're, two, yeah. two remarks. So I think that you, the information you mentioned about uh, the possible uh, Russian counteroffensive on the south in the direction of Priverich and Zaporizhia, and about uh, these referendums and including these territories uh, in Russian uh, in, in Russia and uh, holding a holding the nuclear umbrella over them. So it's, I, I think it's a, some kind of a psychological uh, operation against Ukraine and against supplying uh, Ukraine with Western weapons. So do not supply Ukraine with weapons because we will use the, the nuclear uh, nuclear weapon against Ukraine. So I think this is the main message of it. But according to this possible uh, counter uh, Russian counter of, uh, offensive operation on the south, so we've seen that uh, the Russians have successes, tactical successes in their advances in Eastern Ukraine, which is the result of, of concentrating a big amount uh, of uh, troops and uh, equipment on the certain uh, directions on the front. So to have successes on the south in Zap Zaporizhia and uh, Kriverik directions, they have also to create such, a, uh, to accumulate such, uh, such forces and uh, uh, equipment which they had, for example, in uh, north on north of Luhansk region or in uh, Donetsk region. To, to have that, they have to relocate in current circumstances. They have to relocate troops from the uh, Kharkiv or from Luhansk or from Donetsk region to the south, which uh, they are doing now. But they are doing now that not. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I don't think that they are doing that for counteroffensive operations, but to fill in gaps, which we mentioned in the, the don't to have the breakthrough of their defense lines on the south. And it's very interesting, Igor. They, they, of course, they yeah, just, they, to, they, to, just to remark, they, they rotate indeed not to the right band of Dnieper because it's mm -hmm. a pure logistic. They, they concentrated on the left band, all yeah. of these forces. They stay in here because it's impossible to move all of these forces yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to, to the right band. 
It's so, and if they start this big counter offensive operation, like again, pushing our forces back, uh, they will have problems on, for example, in Donbass or in, uh, in Donetsk or in Luhansk region. So it's very, it's very difficult for them, you know, to, 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 to conduct uh, such operations, for, to continue conducting such operations from uh, all, all these directions. And yeah. this total mobilization in Russia and, uh, you know, you know, they, they, they will have have big problems with that. Yeah, because Kherson is a the symbol, south. symbolic city. Yeah, of course, it's uh, it's impossible to imagine for Putin that they lost it. It's it's, it's yeah, all, and it will be destroyed. it will be a, a tragedy for Putin. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, and pro for propaganda, it's it's, it's not a, yes. it's a, you know Snake Island. If you explain yeah, it, the act of the goodwill, yes. but but Kherson, it's impossible to say and. And uh, what... the biggest biggest loss of the Russian troops uh, in this story it was uh, their song. So yeah, that... and actually the uh, differences between uh, Don Donbass and uh, uh, Kharkiv Oblast compared to Kherson Oblast, the logistical lines. If if in Donbass they have a wide uh, uh, Russian border, yeah. which is yeah. absolutely without limitation, even after the uh, under the uh, uh, fire of HIMARS, it's it's possible to decentralize and put a lot of small vehicles, for example, tracks. Because they don't <laughs> depend on bridges. <laughs> yeah, and in this situation, they cannot provide these small, uh, let's say, small vehicles with a lot of a uh, lot of uh, ammunition. They need to use something by railway and uh, trying to go through these bridges. And it, it's, it, it's a real problem for them. Just continue about the informational psychological operations. I like to to uh, ask you to discuss uh, maybe for a couple of minutes about Amnesty International because it was a shock for uh, for Ukraine. Uh, this uh, this uh, and I would say statement. not for the first time. Yeah, not for the same time, but uh, this time it was uh, the I think the, the most cynical statement which we can imagine. That uh, I just uh, maybe make some citation of of. Uh, <laughs> of this because it's it's uh, really crazy. Uh, uh, Ukraine statics has have violated international humanitarian law as they turned civilian objects into military targets. The ensuring Russian strikes in populated areas have killed civilians and destroyed civilian infrastructure. And uh, this is absolutely for me uh, uh, the, the first place. Not every Russian attack documented by Amnesty International has followed this pattern. So uh, they told that Ukrainian forces usually uh, broken the international law, but not always Russians use this pattern. So uh, sometimes Russians actually, they are war crimes, but in, in generally, generally Ukraines are war crimes. Now this is, uh, this is uh, absolutely crazy. Uh, I just uh, could say that um, it's, it's uh, obviously uh, paid uh, informational operations and uh, paid by Russians, of course. In 2016, there was this, uh, a report by Human Rights Watch with the same, same, same statements. I, I, I wrote an article uh, when I uh, analyzed that, uh, that statement. And uh, the, uh, that, that report, and there was the same statement that Ukrainian forces uses uh, the civilian objects that they are shelling on the civilian objects in, in Donbass, and so on and so forth. So it's it's nothing new. Regarding this statement, I, I like to two comments. Uh, first, uh, by our foreign uh, minister Kuleba, who said it, that uh, in such a way the Amnesty International is uh, creating the false balance between Ukraine and and, and the aggressor and uh, creating the false uh, reality where everyone is uh, a little bit guilty. They don't uh, say that Russian is aggressor, this Russian is... So everything which they are witnessing here, this Amnesty International, <laughs> was caused by Russian aggression. No, they are saying that Ukrainians are using the, 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 the civilian objects, and this is the, the, uh, uh, the, the reason why people in Ukraine are not dying. But not the Russian aggression and, and not Russian uh, shelling and destroying the, the whole territory of Ukraine. And the second one is the statement by one of Ukrainian analysts who said that this uh, uh, this uh, report of the Amnesty International is like a 
well, Ukraine, you, you have to commit a suicide. You have to commit a suicide and everything will be okay. And for Russians and for, for the rest of the world. So commit a suicide. And then we'll, we'll not be casualties uh, from the civilian side and so on and so forth. But again, we will not commit a suicide. We will continue fighting. The Russians continue killing Russian soldiers and destroying the Putin's plans. Absolutely. Uh, Volodymyr, would you like to? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. I, I'd like to uh, bring your attention to the response of uh, Chairman and General Secretary of Amnesty International, Agnes Kalmar. I, I will bring a quote of her tweet. Ukrainian and Russian social media mobs and trolls, they are all in, uh, in today attacking amnesty investigations. This is called war propaganda, disinformation, misinformation. This won't dent our impartiality and won't change the facts. So I think that uh, chairmanship of this organization even do not understand how they uh, manipulated with uh, information. And what is interesting about the, this particular tweet is uh, that uh, Ukrainian branch of Amnesty International said that uh, their points uh, on this publication were just whipped out. That means that uh, Agnes Kalmard names Ukrainian branch of Amnesty International as a mobs of trolls. In this uh, particular case of this uh, Amnesty International publication, we are witnessing uh, what are the con consequences when uh, some, uh, some journalists uh, attempt to cover a situation without a clear understanding of how warfare works and uh, without understanding of uh, nature of the war and uh, i fully agree with you guys that uh, if ukraine ukrainian troops will uh, leave uh, cities and villages that will uh, bring our war to uh, to an end because uh, russians will uh, capture these uh, cities these strongholds of ukrainian forces and th th that is how modern warfare doesn't doesn't work if ukraine ukrainian troops will follow the tactics recommended by amnesty international the ukrainian armed forces will be fully wasted and god, uh, god save us god i, I save think us that, from, that is uh, more not about uh, uh, paid uh, publications uh, paid pu publications by russians because uh, if we follow this particular publication uh, there are m statements about uh, Russian war, war crimes as well, but it is more yeah, that, about yes, uh, but, but this misunderstanding is, but this of, is, of the nature of the warfare. But this, this is, is how this the is, psychological is, operations are being done. Are being, uh, are being of course, Vladimir, do not be naive. Uh, <laughs> the uh, the uh, Amnesty International, very experienced organization, they yes. understood everything. They understood everything. And, and yeah, but you said something about misunderstanding. I totally agree with Mikhailo. They Absolutely. It's a pace, it, it's a money, it's a big money. And uh, when she called uh, Mr. Kuleba... made on purpose. And made on purpose. Yeah, she, she called Mr. Kuleba, a Ukrainian MFA, as a troll, attacking Amnesty yeah. International. Yes. Like a virgin, virgin uh, uh, Amnesty International. I cannot believe this, uh, this theater, you know. It's, it's a theater, bad theater, and I think they, they got a lot of money, and uh, I'm sure that we will find uh, this information very soon. How, because remember this uh, Austrian MFA dancing with Putin, everybody told, no, it's, it's occasionally. Mm -hmm. And now, where is she? Where is she, this, this uh, uh, great girl with dancing with Putin? She absolutely uh, confirmed that they paid for, for, for all of this action. So, I'm not talking about Schroeder and, uh, and, other, uh, and other such guys. There was a statement by the Ukrainian branch of uh, Amnesty International. And uh, the, 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 the chairman of the Ukrainian branch said that uh, they wanted uh, to, to include our Ukrainian uh, conclusions in this report, but they, uh, the, the, the main office refused and said no. Then they tried to, to block 
the publishing of this uh, to prevent publishing this uh, report and they also uh, the, the, the main office uh, didn't want to listen to, to, to Ukrainian branch Ukrainian branch suggested the main office to uh, ask for comment for Ukrainian MOD I don't know if they did did so or, or didn't but uh, at the moment of the publishing there was no response from the from the MOD so it's totally uh biased uh, report and, but, and to be honest just just one word uh, okay you are right you are writing about uh, ukraine using U ukrainian troops uh, using civilian objects and so on and so forth where's the uh, the same portion of information of or analysis about russian forces yeah why they didn't publish some investigation in kiev oblast in erpin bucha uh, yes the, Yes. And in, for example, on, on Kiev, liberated territories. Right? Yeah, right? yeah. The Kiev, for example, where territorial defense acting inside yeah. of the Kiev, but this is this is the nature of territorial defense. This is local people living here. They serve in territorial defense. Of course, they will use streets and objects of of the city. And actually, but this, is, is, this the is the war. war. The war goes the war waged in in the fields, in the forest, and in the cities. Of course, it is the war. So you cannot avoid. So even there are circumstances when the uh, enemy pushes, pushing you back to the city or into the city, and you are, for example, like Azov, uh, like there were battle in Mariupol that the troops were uh, closed, locked in the city. So what they had have had to do? Go to Amnesty International. Su suicide go to Amnesty or International. Or go out of the city. Say, oh, we are here, kill us, and that's it. And they, of course, there will be no uh, casualties among the. the and uh, to conclude this, the to conclude this topic, the Amnesty International so, try to amnesty Russian uh, 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 aggressor. This is uh, absolutely right. clear. That's right. Am amnesty for whom? Amnesty for whom? For Russians. Thank you, Amnesty International, for this uh, great uh, psychological operation. And uh, now I, I'd like to uh, like to change the focus and, and uh, try to move to the another part of the wall. Uh, and we have a great uh, uh, colleague, Yuri Poita, which is actually uh, deep in, uh, in, in this topic. And it, this is a natural topic for Yuri. So please explain us what's going on and what, the, what is your forecast for next uh, days and maybe months in, in this area. So the situation uh, around Taiwan. So this week we... We observed very interesting visit of Nancy uh, Pelosi, higher-end official of the U.S. Uh, speaker of the U.S. representative, and it was very interesting because it was, uh, you know, kind of very huge uh, hysteria from the Chinese media and also from the uh, from their officials that it is uh, this uh, visit is uh, uh, very uh, serious uh, violation of the international law and a very serious violation of the one China principle. And even in some Chinese media, there was messages that uh, China, uh, Chinese People Liberation Army of China is ready to, to, to even uh, attack and uh, to, to hit the, the aircraft. So uh, lots of people observed uh, her visit uh, and, uh, and uh, th th they believe that the new hot uh, hot uh, spot uh, could, hot place could be uh, could be in, in our world. So the problem, the main problem, was that the China, the China and the U.S. Uh, adjust uh, one China principle or one China policy. According to this one one China principle and one China policy, there is only one China in the world. So Taiwan is a part of of China, and uh, this principle is followed uh, both. Uh, for, uh, by the U.S. and uh, by China and uh, by the the most of the uh, of the countries and uh, Taiwan is agree with this principle. But the main um, difference between uh, understanding of, of this principle is uh, that uh, U.S. Uh, states that uh, uh, Taiwan could be united with China, but only by uh, uh, by peaceful way and uh, only uh, without any force. Uh, when it comes to China, uh, China very actively developing its military force and, uh, uh, and especially forces uh, that uh, are aimed at, at, uh, at operation in Taiwan Strait. 
uh, and China, uh, according to Chinese documents, according to Chinese statements, uh, Taiwan could be uh, could be uh, returned to China, uh, including using uh, including using force. And this principle is uh, uh, was signed in 1979 when uh, was when uh, diplomatic affairs uh, of U.S. was established with China and was uh, broken uh, with Taiwan. And uh, in this year, that was uh, written a uh, law. Uh, it, it's called a TRA, a Taiwan Relations Act, a uh, law between the uh, United States and uh, Taiwan. According to this document, uh, Taiwan, uh, uh, the US uh, doesn't ha have any uh, diplomatic relations with Taiwan, but have, has um, uh, economic, uh, humanitarian, uh, cultural, and other, other relations. And uh, uh, after uh, signing this law, uh, this one China principle has started, and um, uh, the political visits was significantly uh, significantly uh, limited. Uh, the last uh, high rank uh, visit was in 1995 when the former president of Taiwan visited uh, visited the U.S. and after this uh, the uh, so-called uh, third uh, Taiwan Strait crisis uh, arose. Uh, China was very very critical, very aggressively uh, reacted on this. And then there was uh, about uh, two years of this crisis when China conducted military, military drills, uh, conducted um, uh, different actions, including uh, including embargo, including blockade, uh, and others, and also used uh, ballistic missiles uh, near near Taiwan, Taiwan Strait. And uh, this visit uh, uh, is also a kind of a kind of driver for for, for possible. A negative scenario, kind of a driver of possible crisis. But the problem for China is that um, China is not ready for the big war uh, with the US, and China is not uh, ready uh, to invade Taiwan in terms of military, in terms of uh, international uh, situation, in terms of its economy. So China uh, needs to uh, show, demonstrate itself, itself as a great country because China perceives itself uh, as a great country and superpower. Uh, but uh, and uh, Chinese uh, statements was kind of uh, so we we, we, will, we will protect our national interest. We will not. Uh, give the U.S. to undermine our uh, t uh, territorial uh, so so sovereignty, and our PLA will not uh, sit idly by when uh, this uh, huge violation of uh, uh, of the U.S. Uh, will be done. Uh, according to the U.S. and according to the uh, to the uh, uh, very many uh, states, uh, this visit uh, wasn't a violation of one China principle because uh, uh, because th there were lots of of different visit and uh, the status status quo, uh, uh, according to this one China principle, wasn't uh, wasn't uh, broke. Uh, and uh, so, what what the situation now uh, is look like? So, China started military drills uh, and including uh, online firing drills uh, near Taiwan. And uh, China claimed six uh, zones of the, of these military drills. And uh, already used uh, ballistic missiles. It's about a dozen of ballistic missiles wo was launched uh, pro uh, uh, from uh, Chinese territory, uh, according to different different assessment. According to uh, J Japanese Ministry of Defense, it was uh, nine ballistic missiles. According to, uh, to Taiwanese Ministry of National Defense, uh, it was another an, an, another number. And uh, then China uh, also uh, started uh, cyber attacks. Uh, China uh, uh, actually started this cyber attacks just during the visit, and uh, it was one of the uh, one of the massive cyber attack uh, and kind of top top record uh, when uh, China tried to. Uh, to, to target uh, infrastructure, critical infrastructure, uh, official websites, uh, railway station, and other. And uh, then uh, this is uh, when it comes to military dr drills and six uh, zones uh, that uh, that China claimed um, uh, as as, uh, as zones for for military uh, drills and exercise. Uh, they are uh, very much closer uh, to the Taiwan. Uh, comparing with the uh, Thor Taiwanese uh, Thor Taiwan Strait uh, crisis uh, in 1995, and uh, some of these uh, zones uh, violated uh, territorial water of Taiwan, 
and then China started to uh, to uh, to cross uh, so-called uh, medium line. The medium line. This is a line between uh, mainland China and Taiwan, and to cross um, uh, AD, uh, air defense identification zone. But this uh, crossing of uh, air defense identification zone of Taiwan and the medium line uh, is not very something new. So, uh, so China did it uh, did it before. Uh, so now uh, the China, from my point of view, uh, is in, in quite a difficult situation because China needs to uh, to demonstrate itself as a great country, uh, but at the same time China has um, uh, has uh, kind of difficulties internally and externally. The one of the internal difficulties for China to do something uh, something uh, aggressive, for instance, to start the war, that uh, there is. A, a, China uh, Communist Party Congress will start in autumn this year, and according to assessment of uh, of experts, of, of many experts, uh, the, uh, the the leader uh, of China Xi Jinping uh, is very likely to to, to be re-elected, but uh, he needs a very calm situation internally and externally. And uh, you know, uh, every crisis around Taiwan could uh, could lead to the global crisis uh, uh, all over the world because Taiwan is one of the uh, key uh, manufacturer of the uh, uh, of the chips of the high technology. It's about sixty five percent of uh, of uh, world uh, market of uh, chips uh, is related to Taiwan. Uh, so. Uh, every, uh, a crisis around Taiwan, or even blockade, or uh, even uh, something, something like that, could could lead to the crisis uh, in the world, and could also uh, hit, and definitely will hit China, because China is very dependent on the uh, Taiwanese uh, export of uh, IT technology. It's about um, uh, more than thirty billion dollars per year. Uh, of uh, trade between Taiwan and, and China, and uh, the, the main main part of this uh, turnover uh, is related to, to IT technology and to chips that China very needs because uh, Taiwan is uh, is a top level uh, of manufacturer and the uh, the the most modern uh, chips uh, are made in Taiwan. Uh, so uh, generally. Actually, generally, Taiwanese experts that I I, I, I was talking uh, who uh, so they are uh, they believe that uh, the crisis will, will gradually uh, calm down, so it will be kind of de-escalation of, of, of this crisis. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the uh, more uh, uh, more more long uh, term. Uh, uh, China is uh, is gradually preparing for the big war. So it's prepared, preparing uh, in terms of economy and uh, in terms of military, uh, in terms of uh, international relation, uh, uh, etc. And according to the assessment of uh, Taiwanese experts, it's about uh, five years uh, uh, that needs to uh, uh, China's military to be ready to to, to this uh, to this. Uh, Big war or or invasion uh, with Taiwan. Uh, so um, and and another interesting observation from my point of view that uh, many countries uh, were uh, very uh, uh, you know were very against a Chinese re reaction, uh, including G G7, uh, including many European countries uh, stated that uh, China overreacted uh, uh, in, in terms of this uh, visit of uh, Nancy Pelosi. And uh, then uh, interesting observation that big business is also uh, very worried about the situation, and uh, especially that business that is deeply involved in uh, China, deeply uh, connected with uh, Chinese uh, Chinese market. So uh, big business also could consider uh, the way of uh, of decrease its its dependence on China, maybe even withdrawal, even decoupling. Of China, uh, but we will see how the situation will develop because uh, there are there could be another visits, uh, especially from 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 Germany, from from other countries that uh, that, that uh, stated that, that uh, they could visit uh, Taiwan as well. So uh, so uh, we will see uh, how this crisis uh, end and and if there will be any drivers for potential uh, potential uh, crisis. Uh, yeah, uh, just yeah to to continue eager question. How Russia can use this situation? Uh, because we discussed that Putin on the deadlock on Ukraine, and of course, obviously, he's looking uh, panoramically trying to find the uh, Balkans 
or uh, Taiwan, or Tava, uh, or Central Asia, Caucasus, Nagorno-Karabakh, trying to, to use all of this conflict to avoid the uh, strategic disaster in Ukraine. Is it possible for Russia how, somehow to use uh, this China-Taiwan conflict uh, crisis uh, in, in all interests? What do you think? So it depends on how, in, in what way this crisis uh, will continue. So there could be different scenarios like status quo or deescalation, the de-escalation, uh, sorry, uh, or maybe uh, another an another escalations, uh, but limited limited escalation. Maybe uh, if uh, there is a scenario of, uh, of of huge crisis like military clashes between uh, Taiwanese uh, um, forces and Chinese forces, and then uh, the U.S. Uh, could uh, could get involved get directly involved because according uh, to to uh, the U.S. Uh, policy. Uh, towards Taiwan, uh, there is uh, a definition like uh, strategic uncertainty. So, uh, so the U.S. Uh, doesn't uh, say that uh, that, uh, that uh, they uh, will protect Taiwan in, uh, in case of uh, military invasion, but uh, U.S. Uh, says that. Uh, so, according to this uh, act, according to this China uh, Taiwan Relation Act, uh, U.S. will provide uh, Taiwan with uh, military equipment and with military service. And according to some statements, for instance, as the latest state statement of Biden, uh, the U.S. Uh, will protect Taiwan uh, in case of, uh, of China invasion. So in this case, of course, uh, in this, very, in this uh, scenario, um, uh, China, from, from my point of view, uh, will, uh, will um, look for uh, alliance, the military alliance and the military political alliance uh, as well. And um, uh, you know, uh, we know that uh, the most of the uh, Russian uh, land troops are involved uh, in, uh, in in war in Ukraine. But navy uh, navy is, is free uh, to act. For instance, um, uh, uh, for instance, navy that is located uh, near near Japan, Russian navy. So uh, I believe that in this case, China uh, will ask uh, Russia for military help. Not. Uh, maybe not for the uh, direct uh, military action or uh, or, uh, or or in in, in the uh, in this battle, but maybe for military presence or to blockade, for instance, uh, to to make uh, uh, to blockade J Japanese uh, forces uh, in, in in their ports. Uh, in this case, of course, uh, Ch uh, Russia will be able to ask uh, China. Uh, to do something uh, in return, for instance, uh, to, to provide with military technology, with military uh, with weaponry, with uh, UAVs or uh, intelligence information uh, using uh, using space intelligence of, of China, uh, uh, etc. But this uh, scenario is, uh, from my point of view, is unlikely because China is not ready for the war, and China uh, is very very uh, boring and very cautious about. Uh, possible uh, escalation. So China is uh, is conducting so-called uh, gray zone operation towards Taiwan. So China uh, does something. For instance, this uh, violation of uh, of medium line, violation of uh, identification uh, zone. Uh, but China doesn't do anything that could lead to the military conflict. So, so China doesn't uh, uh, doesn't uh, cross red lines. Uh, and another uh, another uh, point. Uh, could be and uh, also interesting observation that uh, Russia uh, on diplomatic level fully supported uh, Chinese action and fully uh, uh, and uh, criticized a lot uh, U.S. action. Said that it was responsible that U.S. action and this visit uh, undermined the uh, regional security and undermined international relations, something like that. And uh, some representative from the uh, from uh, Russian government. Uh, also stated that Russia is ready to to provide military help uh, for, for for China. Uh, I'm not sure that uh, that it, it only uh, like uh, empty war or um, uh, or it could be done. But uh, from my point of view, uh, Russia is uh, kind of interested of escalation because uh, it could uh, uh, how to say uh, it could. Uh, uh, distract attention, maybe from absolutely, it. absolutely, and it could destroy red lines that uh, that China now has in relation with uh, with the West. 
and it could uh, lead to, to the uh, more, more uh, tight, more uh, in-depth relation uh, China and Russia uh, that uh, Russia is very interested in. But, yeah. So firstly, I'd like to, to, to thank for the absolutely brilliant uh, analysis of the situation. Uh, you uh, mostly answered my question, but uh, to summarize, to summarize, uh, can can we uh, witness in the nearest future that tightening relations between Russia and and, and Ukraine? I mean, uh, will will China somehow support Russia with uh, military equipment or other uh, important uh, stuff? We will which will influence the, the situation on the battlefield in, in Ukraine. Uh, so what China now uh, does for Russia and what is China's position uh, on, uh, on the uh, Russian-Ukraine war? Um, the most experts that I know uh, claim it pro-Russian neutrality. Russian experts claim it uh, friendly to Russian neutrality. Uh, it means that uh, China, on the one hand, uh, say that uh, China respect uh, Ukraine's territorial integrity, sovereignty, independence, so on. But uh, on the other hand, China, uh, China uh, uh, never criticize Russia for its, its invasion. Uh, China uh, blame US and uh, NATO uh, for the uh, so-called Ukrainian crisis. Uh, China uh, uh, always criticize uh, US and uh, NATO and um, uh, and the West for providing uh, providing weaponry for for Ukraine. China always against uh, against a sanction economic sanctions that was uh, that were imposed uh, against uh, Russia. Uh, China always votes against Ukrainian resolution uh, in, 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 in the UN. And even uh, and sometimes China even uh, spread this information on the Ukraine, uh, for instance, uh, on the uh, so-called 20 biolabs, US biolabs in Ukraine with biological weaponry and something like that. And it's very, uh, very dangerous. Uh, uh, from my point of view, because it was uh, this uh, 20 uh, biolabs, so called 20 biolabs, was uh, a justification of Russia to invade. Uh, and also, China uh, very much uh, support Russia in terms of, uh, uh, of media, in the media level. Uh, so they, they share information and they uh, create, they are creating the, the, the co common, uh, common narratives. And uh, also, Ch China provides uh, diplomatic, diplomatic support. But at the same time, uh, there is not any evidence of, uh, uh, of so-called material support uh, in terms of military, in terms of military uh, equipment. And uh, China is very cautious about, about uh, sanctions because China doesn't want to, to be also, also to, uh, to be under, under this uh, so-called secondary sanction. Uh, so uh, uh, could China change its position? From my point of view, it's uh, kind of unlikely uh, in, in, in current geopolitical situation. Maybe huge crisis in Taiwan could lead, uh, uh, but, uh, but according to my assessment and according to assessment of uh, my colleagues, for instance, in the European Union, uh, on China, they, 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 they say that it's very unlikely to, to do something from China. China, of course, could, could, could provide some, uh, some assistance, but it will, it, it will not change the, uh, the geopolitically. It will not change the situation uh, on, on the battlefield. Thank you. I'm okay. very sorry. I need to go because there is another, another discussion. Uh, okay. Okay, Yuri. Thank you very much for your really brilliant uh, uh, presentation and uh, report. So see you again soon, I think. Thank and, you. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah. yeah, and we will, we will uh, finish our discussion. Uh, I think it was absolutely great. And uh, uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, great uh, uh, thoughts, insights, great discussion, great uh, talks. And I hope uh, that we will see uh, soon in, uh, I, hope, uh, I hope good news and discuss good news on all of directions. Thank you and see you again. Subscribe here to receive more videos from the New Geopolitics Research Network.